Alright, you're welcome to yet another installment of the Football Gazette podcast once again. Of course, you know what it is we do here. This is where we give you in-depth analysis on issues and matters emanating from the ever-exciting, controversial world of football. Yeah, oh, earlier in the week, we saw the draws for the round of 16 UEFA Champions League 2023-2024 took center stage and we had a couple of fantastic pairings. Uh, matches, matchups to look forward to as well. Well, starting with, we're going to be discussing the fate of the English sides remaining in the competition, Manchester City and of course the Gunners, after a very long period of time making a return to the competition. Now they've made it to the round of 16, where they will be traveling away to face FC Porto right there in Portugal for the first leg yeah. of that one. Yeah. So what's your expectation <clears throat> for the Gunners? Well, considering the fact that the two sides, Arsenal and Manchester City, had a good uh, group stage run, and now <clears throat> they are in the round of 16 of this competition, the biggest of all uh, competition in club uh, sides. But then, considering the fact that, let's ask now, considering the fact that <laughs> the last seven times they have, they, they've you know, appeared in this competition, they have been knocked out seven times, and the last time they qualified, they faced the same FC Porto. Uh, and they qualified to the last eight. But then, all I can see is history repeating itself. I, I don't in you what, see it in like what that. way, in a good way this time around? Is it history repeating itself such that Arsenal gets to go past FC Porto once again? I mean, putting an end to their seven straight defeats at the round of 16 stage? Well, let me even take it back to the last meetings between these two sides. Okay. The last meeting between these two sides happened 2009-2010 UEFA Champions League competition in which Porto defeated Arsenal at home, uh, two goals to one, and uh, Arsenal came back with a five goals to nothing at their home in the Emirates Stadium. And I so, think that was the last time we saw Arsenal progress to the quarterfinals. To the quarterfinals game. of the UEFA mm -hmm. Champions League. And now they are facing the same thing again. A lot has changed since yeah. 2010 down to this time between these two clubs. Arsenal has, you know, they have revamped and they have a new manager. And Mikel Arteta, Mikel Arteta has been doing so well for Arsenal. You know, for the past two seasons now, we have been seeing Arsenal at the front foot of, of games. You know, they, they have done well. So, they almost won the league. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. I mean, almost the... <laughs> will always be the time there. All yeah. right. Uh, talking about FC Porto. Meanwhile, while you said a lot has changed with Arsenal, I want to believe a lot has actually changed with FC Porto as well. Of course, this is another side who did fantastically well for themselves uh, during the course of the group stage. So, it won't be a walk in the park. For Arsenal, I mean, that's just me resonating that that particular matchup won't be a walk in the park for Arsenal. Although I still fancy their progression, maybe by very slim scoreline of uh, two goes to one over both, uh, both legs, maybe three goes to one. For me, Arsenal progresses. Well, uh, in both fronts, I also do see Arsenal progressing. And Arsenal fans can only anticipate what exactly is going to happen in this match. Well, we might see a little bit upset, maybe in the in any of the legs they would be playing and don't forget the highest scoring scheme progress to the next fix of the champions well but then i just hope we don't get to see an upset in that one because <laughs> if there's anything we should talk about is the fact that yeah. in recent times now arsenal fans have been feeling so confident in, in themselves they need and, to they need okay, to is it, is it something they should yeah they need to they need to because they really suffered enough yes oh, because okay. the way so they now that they are team they are the elephant occupying the top of the three I mean, they should really be confident in themselves. They need to be confident. You know, the squad is really okay. playing to 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 that uh, to attain mm. that high yeah. level of confidence from fans and you know across the players and the managers. So that is fantastic for them. All right, let's talk about another English side. Of course, the our uh, second of the two English sides remaining in Manchester City. Once again, for the opt-in time, they are getting one of the easiest draw in the round of sixteen. They will be going away first to FC Copenhagen. Ah, uh, well, it's looking as though, I mean, it's going to be a walk in the park for Manchester City. Season in, season out, fans have always clamored of the fact that Manchester City get the easiest of draws when it comes to round of 16 and every other knockout phases. But this time around again, it's repeated itself. Manchester City, Copenhagen, straight win over both legs for Manchester City. I think you should agree with me. Uh, <laughs> well, I see Manchester City as the most luckiest team. In the UEFA Champions League, and 
you know, the the last meeting between these two, these two sides was uh, in the in the last Champions League game, 2022-2023, in which uh, they met in the group stage. Mm. Uh, Manchester City defeated uh, Copenhagen in the first uh, matches of the group stage, and you know, the second leg, uh, they had a draw. But going, this is a different competition now. I mean, a different stage in the competition for the UEFA Champions League. And of course, it is a competition in which the highest scoring team progressed to the, uh, to the next phase. And I see Manchester City doing that against Compeyang. Well, you know, let's quickly talk about the fact that Manchester City hasn't really been the same this season. I yeah. want to believe personally, probably they are suffering from what I can call a fatigue from their treble winning uh, season the last time out. This season, they haven't really been in the first of form dropping points in uh, the domestic league. Although, even in the Champions League as well, they I think, okay, they managed to actually win all six of their uh, matches, I think so, uh, with the likes of uh, maybe Real Madrid as well. So, this time around, I really don't feel Copenhagen should pose any threat to the treble at all. Winner. At all. Well, I don't see Copenhagen uh, posing a big threat to Manchester City. When you look at the Manchester City squad, you could tell that they have enough players quality players mm. to make a difference at any point in time in that game for Manchester City. So for me, Manchester City progressed to the next phase. Okay, so that's a total of two of two English sides progressing to the next round quarter final stage. All right, another interesting matchup we can take a look at is the fact that two of the sides who play very rigid football, although at some times it can really be conversative the fact that uh, Inter Milan and Atletico de Madrid from Spain has been paired to uh, lock horns together in uh, getting the sole ticket to the quarter-final stage of the UEFA Champions League 2023-2024. Well, this is one match of football fans would really look forward to. Apart from the football flair that that particular matchup actually promises, we uh it promises to be another physical battle as well. Yes, and that's yes. one we really look forward to. Inter Milan, Atletico de Madrid. Well, <laughs> considering the fact that this th these two sides have never met against each other in the UEFA Champions League, Inter Milan, like you said, is going to be a lot of physical battle and tactical battle as well at the same time. Because looking at the way Inter has you know, played in the Serie A this season, they have, they have been so fantastic going head to head the life of Juve, Napoli, AC Milan, and with Lautaro Martinez firing from all cylinders. Exactly, as well. and uh, Atletico Madrid this season as well. They're only, you know, sitting in the fourth position with Real Madrid, Girona, and Barcelona occupying the first three positions. And right how about there. we mention the fact that Atletico was actually the highest scoring side in the group stage of the seventeen in total? I think that's that's a lot. Yes, we had we had this fifth scoring side. They have Alvaro Morata, Antonio Grisma, and a couple of other players who can actually make a, a difference in any mm. game for them. But then Inter Milan, these two sides are are in good form let me say in the champions league they have done well for themselves but then i think i i'm giving atletico a hedge mm. over inter milan this time well me personally i feel with the with the with the recent show from both sides yes maybe just maybe a penalty shootout at the end of both legs okay. will decide it out well that's that for inter milan and atletico de madrid all right another match of what talking about is the one involving fc barcelona and SSC Napoli, that's uh, Victor Simmons Napoli, has been firing from all cylinders uh, in the course of these uh, season champions league and of course the domestic league as well. So, uh, Napoli, FC Barcelona, your take on that? Ah, a tasty fish coming our way actually. Uh, I do see Napoli as a threat uh, to, to Barcelona. Barcelona has, have to be you know, very, very careful of what is coming their way right there and of course for me i, I did go for napoli doing well, that over barcelona ah well for me as well i will be going for a napoli offset <laughs> for barcelona <laughs> well barcelona fans that's uh with no apologies for that one it's actually our own perspective here oh, okay. uh, ssc napoli straight into the quarter final of the uefa champions league 2023 2024 all right football fans that's the beat we would be able to take on today's installment of the Football Gazette podcast on few some other times or we'll make a return to your screens. Do stay good and safe. Peace, Peace out. out.